And we're going to open our uh, call this evening, as we will open all our calls, uh, with a prayer. And our honorable guest, we call him the Colonel, uh, will be providing us with our tonight. Good evening. I'd like to quote a uh, Bible verse before I start, and it's John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto me, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And all of life is about learning to follow him. At our monthly prayer in the score, we always consider four words, and I think it would be well for everybody to consider them. Those four words are integrity, accountability, humility, and tenacity. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, look upon our nation with mercy and forgiveness. We the people have fallen away from you. Help us, Lord, return to your eternal truths that have held this nation together for more than 200 years. I pray that we as a nation again become people of prayer, both acknowledging our blessings come from you and praying for your will to be done in our country. You know the hearts of those involved in politics. Clarify their understanding of the First Amendment. I pray that you will help our nation return to the sanctity of marriage between one man and one man. Compel them to seek the wisdom from you and from your people. May we never take for granted your holy written word. Following God's teachings means everything to us. Where we have failed, forgive us. When we falter, give us a nudge. When we grow weary, encourage us. Let us keep the ears of our hearts open so we can hear you speak to us. Help us recognize that we have a duty to you, our God, and to our families, our communities, and our country. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Um, our first speaker is going to be Hal, and he's going to give us again a review of our mission. Every week we do have new callers that, that are online for the first time, so we're going to try to start every call um, with a review of why we're here and, and what we're doing. So, Hal, if you'll do us the honor, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Karen. Yes, the, or the origin of this effort is a coordination between the North American Law Center and the Constitutional Accountability Coalition of Tennessee and hopefully a lot of other states as you come along. The objective is to jumpstart constitutional action that has been needed politically and required by the Constitution in re response to actions of President Obama and his administration. The necessity for our efforts stems from the failure of our congressmen to actually fulfill their oath of office, which obligates them to, quote, support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The necessity for this arises from violations of the Constitution that were listed by J.B. Williams of the North American Law Center in the main part of the first open call. The violations giving us the articles of impeachment that he has listed are listed in the respective websites of the NALC and the CACTN. The first open conference call on this project was held Monday the 29th of June in this same format. Some 325 people called in from 25 The call was produced and managed as this call by Karen Bracken, who is managing it again. Due to intense interest and immediate action by callers, the call lasted over two hours. The call last week was reported at 159 callers, and those who spoke were from at least 10 states. The first call started with an introduction by Dave and was followed by an explanation why the action to impeach must start now with some discussion of the legal process. J.B. of the uh, North American Law Center followed this with a more detailed history of the work of the NALC, and a more detailed specification of those articles. The bulk of the time on that call was used in discussion with many of those who called in from various states with questions of how to get the process started in their states. We urged each state to start, and Karen and others described various steps. Two states reported on that call that they had started on that call pages for their uh, jurisdictions in Facebook. 
This remarkable, highly motivated response has convinced us that there is a genuine opportunity to organize and mobilize an effort that will begin the impeachment process and expose to those Americans who are still asleep that their future is in danger. But that action now can re rescue us from the peril of continued reign by Obama. Now, last week's call was more nuts and bolts, with callers reporting their progress in gathering members, setting up Internet presence, and so forth. Many of the calls on that subject were how-to questions. The organizing needs to be completed very soon so that we can focus on contact with congressmen. These are the only relevant contacts outside our membership in the next step in this effort. We need several things. First, we needed a nationwide activist group. This will consist of a minority of the people concerned, but it will be the moving force. Then a widespread of less active but supporting citizens who will at least contact their congressmen. We also need a public information campaign on the Internet and alternate resources like independent radio, local news, and that sort of thing. A contact effort is then going to be needed in each potentially useful congressional district. Some congressmen are simply not going to be useful, so there's no sense wasting time on them. We need to co concentrate on ones who can help. Those need to have repeated contact from successive differing activists and citizens. We also need a data collection program where results can be gathered for strategic planning. The first purpose of that is to identify one or more congressmen who will stand up to their duty and file articles of impeachment. The second purpose is to identify those who waffle or oppose us so that we can contest their primaries and general elections next year. So uh, that's the wrap-up, and uh, mm -hmm. Karen, it's back to you. Thank you very much. As usual, that was excellent. Um, like I said, we're going to follow a little different format this week, and um, some of the Q&A is going to be broken up into individual sections. Um, just to give you a little update on the state coalitions that have been created, uh, we're up to 11 state coalitions. Um, I had hoped for a much higher number um, because it's going to be the state coalitions that will convince our representatives that this is a national movement with national interest and national support. Um, the states that we have on board now are Tennessee, Florida, Texas, Wyoming, Kansas, Michigan, Oklahoma, California, Louisiana, Delaware, and Virginia. They are the 11 states. Um, so what I'm going to do is the first Q&A session tonight will be opened up to the state leaders only. If you are on this call and you are a state leader, um, I'd like you to hit star six, and then you'll be prompted to hit one to put you in the Q&A. And again, this is only for state leaders, so we can get a brief update from you as to what's going on with your state group. Okay, so we're going to start with the first caller. Uh, which is uh, ends in number five zero one four. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Five zero one four. That's me, California. Okay. And so this is the state leader for California. Go ahead. And I only have two hundred ninety three members so far. And once I get all my members uh, joined up, I. Uh, I had asked for them to invite all of their friends, all their like-minded friends, to join in this effort. And that's what I'm, I'm working on to expand my coalitions. I have uh, somebody who's on the radio. She's very interested in, in uh, get, getting an interview set up. Uh, she's very well known uh, all throughout California. So I wanted to get that set up with uh, leaders of the, this coalition. And uh, working on getting contacting the various tea parties and uh, getting them involved as well. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I saw. I looked at your uh, website today, and um, you had two hundred two hundred ninety four um, people actually signed up. So that's that's pretty that's pretty decent for the short period of time that you've actually been online. So 
Um, thank you very much. Have you contacted or do you know of anyone that's contacted any legislators and gotten any feedback? Uh, I wanted to, um, I, I have a friend who lives in um, a representative of Duncan Hunter's district, and I want to go with her to uh, to go to that office and present that. Um, okay. His, off, his office uh, manager said that she could FedEx it directly to him in D.C. It would be coming from their office, so it would be going straight to him. But I want to find out when he's going to be back in town so we can set up an appointment. Right, right. Okay, well, thank you very much. And we're going to move on to, uh, whoops, it looks like I lost my my uh, Q&A people. I think Deborah Weiss, Deborah was next. If you want to hit star six and hit one again, get back in the queue. For some reason, it's. A couple calls that were in there dropped off. All right. Okay, two three three three. Go ahead. Uh, Texas, and um, I have uh, somebody that's going to create the Indiana page on Facebook, and I've got uh, somebody else that's going to create the Alaska uh, page on Facebook, but it's not going to be for another three weeks for them. And I've talked with somebody in Kentucky that wants to start the page, and I'm going to help him. And I've got another person that wants to start the West Virginia page, so I'm going to help that person. Wow. Thank you so much. You're really – somebody's breathing very heavily in their unmuted phone. <laughs> so we do have some speakers that are unmuted, and somebody's breathing very heavily into their phone. Thank you. <laughs> um, that's great. Thank you so much. And um, have you been able to actually talk to any legislators or have any of your members communicated that they have talked to legislators? Not at this time. I've got uh, 60, let's see, I've got 66 members right now. Okay. And, um, it's growing, but... Um, there are some people that are reticent, and one in particular that I'm thinking about and uh, thinks that we're never going to get this done. So, um, well. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it, uh, if you if you feel you'll never get it done, then you you won't get it done. That's you know, yeah, it's definitely not right. the attitude to take, but. Um, okay, so Karen. I'm going to move on. To, yes. Karen, this is JB. I am here, by the way. Yes, um, I see I, you. I, yeah. Okay, I just want to make a quick comment about that person or, or people like that person for sort of red okay. because they believe it will never happen. The people who make statements like this, and, and I don't mean to be harsh towards people like that. I mean, everybody has a legitimate reason to be demoralized in this country right now. But if mm. none of this is good, none of this is going to change until we stop being demoralized and begin being focused and action oriented uh, on what's going on in this country. Saying that I'm rev- I'm hesitant to join such a mission because I don't think it will be successful is like saying I'm hesitant to cut my lawn because I don't think uh, as long <laughs> as I sit here it's going to get cut. And, and you know it's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. And uh, emotionally, it's understandable, but logically, it makes no sense at all. And so, uh, I, I just recommend that people, you know, bring people into a logical, uh, fact-based discussion when that's going on. And I, I did. Play. I really, I really did. And I said, uh, that person is a contact on my own page. And I said, if we sit back and we don't try, we'll never know what we could have achieved. That's right. That's right. Like, like JB always tells us, um, if we don't do anything, we know what the end result is going to be. So we we do know what's going to happen if we don't do anything. So, okay. Thank you so much, Deb. And I really, really do appreciate Deb has really reached out to a lot of different states, has offered her services to help people who are having a problem building Facebook groups and. So, you know, I really do appreciate um, all of your efforts to help 
um, not only your own group, but other states to get up online. So thank you very much. Uh, the next is uh, 30... Oh, this keeps... I don't know what's going on. Every week we have some little problems, right? Uh, 3008, again, if you're in this queue for state questions, just hit your star six and then the number one to get back into the queue. 3008, um, go ahead. 3008. I'm here. Hey, it's Florida. Hi. Hi. Go ahead, Florida. I'm good. Go ahead, Florida. Um, we have a kind of a two-fold pro, uh, problem here. We've got over 400 people that are on the Facebook page. Um, I'm just having a really hard time getting them over to the website so that they'll read the documents and really understand, you know, what we're trying to do and, and to get them to register. Um, we've had several postings on the Facebook page to try to get them over there, and I don't I don't really know what's holding them back. So um, that's kind of the main focus right now is to be able to, I, I want them to, to read the documents so they understand what's going on and what the whole process is. I know a lot of people don't like to do that, but that's been kind of the goal to get them to do that. But the website is up and the Facebook page is up also. Okay, well, thank you so much. And, yeah, I looked at Florida earlier today, too, and saw that you had 440 uh, registered members. You know, I, I would just keep hitting your Facebook page, reminding people to go to the um, to the website. I don't know if you have any share buttons on your website, um, but maybe if you just took, like, the impeachment documents page and shared it to your Facebook just to kind of give people a, uh, an idea of what's on there, but I would just go in periodically and just keep hitting it and tell people, please, you know, sign up because that's also how they're going to get email updates as well. Exactly. And, yeah. Right. Right. Yep. Okay. That's where well, thank we you. I know. I know you've been working really hard at that in Florida, and um, 440 uh, members is a, it's a pretty good showing in, in just a short amount of time. Um, okay, the, and have you tried in Florida, have you contacted any legislators or have any of your members contacted legislators, any kind of feedback? Not, not, I have not, and okay. to my knowledge, no one else has. I have sent out emails to several people that I know around the country, um, giving them the information and hoping that, that they're going to be able to put a coalition together too. Right, right. And okay. I did, I did do that look up on the one gentleman, but he's not a Florida legislator. Okay. He's one from All right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, the next caller is 1267. 1267? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Hi, and what state are you calling? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah. Thank well, you. We haven't grown too much. We have 38 members, um, but I ha I did fix up a post on the page telling who the, each of our five representatives are, and I think I've identified one that I believe might uh, go for uh, making the move. His name wow. is Jim uh, Brindine. Now I have not spoken with him. But he is one of the people who voted against John Boehner's um, being elected, re-elected as the uh, House Majority Leader. And what was and, his name? Uh, Jim Bridenstine. Is it is it Bridenstine? That's it, Bridenstine. Bridenstine. Yes, he he is awesome. He is awesome. Yes. Yes, he is, and I think he might have the nerve to do it. Now, he's out of Tulsa. Um, I have not, oh, on, when I fixed it, it up on the page, I asked for people to please sign in and just say present for the particular um, area that they're in. Uh -huh. And right. I haven't had anybody sign up. 
I did have one gal uh, private message me from uh, Norman, and she's willing to help me. Uh, but I think she's probably got a pretty busy schedule. But what we're in the process of trying to do is add to that uh, post the address and phone number and work hours, office hours, for each of those um, representatives. And because we put a post on there to encourage people to go ahead and set up a time to go and meet face-to-face and that we would give them some instructions uh, as to what to do in that meeting. But I went ahead and started putting some of those files in the file section um, so that people could right. access them more readily. I don't have them all okay. moved over. but um, And then no, another, that's... Thing, mm-hmm. another thing that I've done, I sent out um, notices to all 50 states uh, about the call. This this call this okay. weekend last week. Thank you so much. That's that's wonderful. And um, you know, again, I thank you for your effort, and I thank you for being on the call. Um, it, this is the last call that's in the queue. If there's anybody sitting on hold that is a state leader and would like to uh, give us some feedback, um, please hit star six and then one. And that'll get you in the in the. We have an un we have an unmuted call that is just causing a lot of interference, wind or something. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, anyhow, all right. So we have um, zero one seven one just jumped in the queue. And what state are you calling from? Well, I'm from Louisiana. Hi, how are you? Uh, we, we, we're trying here, you know, uh, I just had a couple of people that, uh, like the page. We're up to 27 since I got it up on Saturday and we have three people that signed up. But the, the issue I had was that I see most of the Facebook or, uh, or mine's on community and it's tied to my personal Facebook, but I don't have a personal Facebook like most people where, uh, People post their personal issues in live Facebook, which transfers it to, uh, I, I think I'm pretty much linked to every about 50 states uh, throughout the United States, all the different militias and uh, patriot groups and stuff. And also, okay, okay. also every every day on my Facebook, I, I, uh, I, I post a document or two, and then on my personal email, I have a lot of, uh, a, a huge email list that I also send information to them, too. So uh, now as for, as for talking to any of my representatives, I haven't had an opportunity to do that yet. Uh, we're putting together a meeting uh, probably next week, and we're going to try to get as many people from the area to get involved, and then we're going to spread some of the workload out to where it won't be just on one person. And right. uh, I have a friend that is working on the website. We, we don't have it up yet, but we're working on that. Oh, that's wonderful. And when you when you do get that website um up, uh, make sure to send me an email uh through the, the Tennessee website or our Facebook page. Uh and I'll I'll make sure to post your website. If you go on to the Tennessee website under state chapters, everybody that has created a Facebook page or a website, um, I posted a link to your site. So that way, if someone were to come onto the Tennessee site from, say, Florida, they would see their own state chapter there. And, of course, my hope would be is they would click on the link and register themselves under the Florida site. So anybody that actually does create a Facebook page or a website and or a website, just make sure that, you know, you let me know and... um you know, I'll make sure that a link is put up on the Tennessee website. And but I go into Facebook all the time, and I kind of peruse several times throughout the day to see if any new new groups have formed in in Facebook. So, but anyhow, thank you so much, Louisiana. Like I said, they just joined on Saturday, and they're up to 22 members. And I think that's a real good strategy is to, to try and get a, a meeting together and and really organize your group. Um, you know, right now, that's pretty much our focus is just building as many st- 
escape groups as we can um, to illustrate or demonstrate to our elected officials that, you know, the American people want this to happen. Um, so thank you very much, and we welcome you to the group. Uh, the next... What's that? Can I say one more thing? What's can that? I'm sorry. Yes. Can I say one more thing? Yes, go ahead. Okay, my, my if everybody uh, just so happens to go to my personal Facebook, it's R.J. Landry, mm-hmm. R.J. 57 Landry, and I have a picture of a zealot. Okay, now my if you go to my friends list, you can probably find somebody that you don't normally have on your personal Facebook that you might be able to get in touch with off of mine. So you're welcome to join in on my Facebook, look through my friends, and then find somebody that you might know or even confuse them. <laughs> in your area. So if you, if you want to do that also. All righty. Well, thank you so much. And uh, the next call is um, 0170, and that's the last call in the queue. Yes, hi. Uh, Oklahoma? Oh, hi, Oklahoma. Hi. Hey, I wanted to uh, follow up on something that was mentioned about uh, this Jim uh, Breitenstein. Uh, when I've been a member of uh, VDA for, you know, since the inception, and as soon as the uh, articles of impeachment uh, were printed up last year, I have a letter uh, dated August 8th of 2014 uh, from this Bridenstine dude, and I'm going to skip through it, but I wanted to, unless he's had a huge change of heart in the last year, uh, one part of this letter says, with regards to impeachment, at this time, I believe there are more constructive and effective means to challenge the president's conduct and hold him accountable. Given the present composition of the Senate impeachment would be likely an exercise in futility. At worst, it could allow the president and his supporters that do distract the public from the very real and serious scandal the administration is facing. That, I'm just kind of, I'm trying to paraphrase, but this was back, the letter I received back from this con was dated August 8th of 2014. Right. Well, I would like to, I would like to know what his remedies are. If impeachment is not a valid remedy, what are his remedies to address um, well, when the NALC, <laughs> when the NALC, you know, published the very next day, I went ahead and downloaded a copy of that, and then wrote this letter to him and attached the articles of impeachment. Uh, and in doing so, uh, again, I was paraphrasing this letter, but this is what he said last year, August eighth of, of last year. So I didn't right. want to waste anybody's time approaching this gentleman unless he's had a hundred you know, one eighty, which politicians are very likely to do sometimes. Right. Are you are you one of his constituents? Go ahead. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact I yes I am. I'm in Tulsa. Well I would I would recommend that you maybe circle back around and see if he still feels that way and if he does then he's gonna go on our list of, you know, People that do not support their oath of office or the Constitution. So go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Wanted to... mm-hmm. yeah, yeah there's a JB. I wanted to comment. I, I saw that letter actually. I think he sent it in to us when you got it, I, if I remember correctly. And I may uh, have. And um, the two things I want to point out is the first is that letter response was written by him prior to the 2014 election in which Republicans did gain control of the Senate. Prior to that, at the time that letter was written, Harry Reid was still running the Senate. And mm-hmm. we, it was very common back then for us to get that kind of response because... No, this I don't mean to interrupt you, but this the date on this is August 8th of last year. Right, but the election was November of last year. You mean when the Republicans took control? Yes, of the of Senate, the right. Senate, of the okay, Senate. November of 2014, okay. Well, excuse me, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to, the only reason that I I even wanted to bring this up is because it was mentioned he may be a good candidate. And this is a letter, you know, written directly by him, and I just read to you what he had to say about it. And there's more to it. Right. I would would recommend circling back around with him and and see if he still holds that position now now that the Republicans have the Senate. If he still does then that's feedback that we need because we are creating a list of legislators that have been contacted 
and their responses. So, well, Karen, yeah, I've got the letter right in front of me. Yeah, Katie, Tom, what'd you say? Call, I said, this caller, you, yourself, sir, uh, this yes. is an important call, really, because he's right. Uh, that is what happened back then. But if I remember correctly, Weinstein was also one of the first members uh, to mention the word impeachment prior to being contacted about impeachment. And then all of a sudden he had flip-flopped and put out this letter that he had in response to that he just read a piece of uh, on air tonight. And so right. Biden has kind of been all over the board here. Uh, if I remember correctly, he was one of the first to actually use the impeachment word against him about Obama and then flip-flopped at the time frame here. And, and, of course, we were getting a lot of that as we were headed into the 2014 election cycle from Republicans. Right. But, uh, you know, what's interesting, and the caller is, is right to call in, I'm glad he did, point out that these guys will pretty much speak to whoever they think is in the room at the time. If they think you're supportive of impeachment and they don't have to actually do it, they'll say, oh, yeah, they should be impeached, blah, 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 blah. Um, but then if you actually ask them to stand up and do something, well, then they have a different, you know, answer to the question a lot of times. Right. You know, again, I didn't mean, I didn't want to jump in. I just, the comment prior, right, while it was fresh, I just wanted to yeah. go ahead and tell you, you know, that I have the letter, and if, if I don't want to waste anybody's time, you know, by by contacting, especially the Oklahoma uh, representatives, unless this guy, and even if he has flip-flopped again, I'd like to continue on with one other thing. After I got this letter back, I wrote him a reply, and I said, as my uh, duly elected representative, I'm asking you, uh, straightforward, is the man occupying the White House, can you assure me with 100% certainty that the man occupying the White House is who he says he is, and if not, that is an impeachable offense in itself. This was a year ago, and I never received any other replies from him. Right. So I had it, and one other thing I'd like to follow up on. I want—I don't want to dominate this conversation, but I'm also one of the founding members of uh, Oath Keepers, and I, I hope you all are familiar with them. But it's a group; it's a constitutional group. It's not a militia group, but there's over fifty thousand members, and it's something that if someone, like an NALC or something, could contact Stuart Rhodes, a constitutional lawyer, the ideology. Uh, of both groups are extremely similar. And if you get Oath Keepers on, you've got about 50,000 members behind you immediately. Right. I think most of us on this call are probably familiar with Oath Keepers. Who is the name you said contact who? Uh, Stuart Rhodes. He's the uh, right. the founder. Right. This um, was back J. in 2000. J.D. Right. would I'm be just... great if... Right. right. Yeah, we need to up. We can definitely contact Stuart, um, and it's a great idea. Do you, do you have any idea how much support for something like impeachment might be in that organization at this point? Uh, I, I think anything that's constitutional is 100%. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, All right, well, uh, Oath contact. Keepers has been involved. If you go to OathKeepers.org and then go into the contact uh, section and then you know, write in, then you'll be able, they'll be able to put you in touch with Stuart. Stuart Rhodes has, in fact, he's coming to Oklahoma, to Mustang, Oklahoma, for an emergency summit uh, in August that I'm going to attend. But it seems like after listening to the last three or four of our calls, it, we've kind of slowed down. I'm trying to make an infusion of a, a lot of people that are very, I mean, they're 100% constitutionally oriented and are behind this impeachment thing. Well, right. uh, if that's the case, we'll certainly reach out to them and get them on board, and, uh, and and you can count on that. We will do that this week. We'll make contact. Yeah, with thank you very much. I, I just wanted to throw that out there to you. No, thank I'm you very much. I really, we appreciate the, the input, and, um, you know, this is where we're going to get the bulk of our feedback, and that's why I like to hear from the different states and, and give, you know, state representatives a chance to um, – to bring up these issues, so we appreciate it, and um, that right. is it. Yes, sir. Let me, uh, yes. Go something. ahead. Uh, Go ahead. For you, there, for you there in Oklahoma, you might try, uh, since you're from Oklahoma and it's a lot easier for you to contact them, you might try talking to Senator Jim Imhoff 
Uh, I know him personally. He's a really good man, and he might be able to help you a little bit with your uh, state representatives. I feel that he's the kind of guy that would be for what we're trying to do. So it's just a funny. Uh, since you're living in Oklahoma, you would have a better chance of getting in touch with him than I would. <coughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, okay Karen, thanks a lot. Is, yes. Th this is Hal. Um, I, I think that the uh, objection that Bridenstine is offering is really a model for what we're going to have to face. So uh, I think that was a real good input, but it's it's an opportunity maybe more than a problem if we deal with it right. Uh, the, uh, I noticed a couple of things uh, in the way he described brother. Uh There's probably more, but when Bridenstine said at the present time, well, things have changed a great deal. As, as J.B. was saying, we've got uh, a completely different complexion in the Senate. And the other part that I think these people need to be reminded of is that um, impeachment is a two-step process, and, and the first step is exposing all the wrongs. Uh, whether or not they get convicted for it and removed from office is is certainly the goal. But to to stain their reputation throughout the remainder of history and to give a warning to any successors is a subordinate goal that, that is still worth fighting for. Right. Absolutely. Thank you. And I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that point up because it is very important. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. I just want to say this real quick, because I know we are going to get that a lot. Uh, you know, he's right. That was at the present time. Uh, the other thing is when your rep tells you, you know, it's, it's not worthwhile or, or whatever the case, what they're really saying is they're okay leaving Obama in charge for the next 18 months. That's what they're telling you, is that they would, rather than risk any political fallout on their part, that they are okay with leaving him a free hand for the next 18 months. Uh, right. And, you know, with, let's remember that they represent us. Uh, and I just think we have to pretty much make it a litmus test for them. If they want right. to sit, then we don't need them. They and and I want to stop them so far, so why not go all out? And <laughs> yeah, I mean, I want, yeah, absolutely. And I want to make one final comment on that before mm -hmm. I, uh, you bring Steve Pigeon on. Uh, it, how, I agree with Hal, Dave, and the caller from Oklahoma. And one thing I want to remind people of is when one person or two people or three people ask a representative to do something, it's probably not going to happen. And that's why we're building these state coalitions, so that it's not one or two, three people making those calls. It's 100 people, it's 500 people, it's 1,000 people calling them for the same reason. And that right. can make a difference. That can make a difference. Right. Thank you. Okay, um, is Mr. Pigeon on the line, do we know? Yes, I am. I'm here. Hi, how are you doing? Okay, um, we have a very special guest speaker tonight, uh, Stephen Pigeon, who is the lead counsel at the North American Law Center. Um, Mr. Pigeon is a recipient of the 2008 Presidential Commission, the 2008 Reagan Congressional Commission, a two-time recipient of the Congressional Medal of Distinction in 2006 and 2007, and a designee for the 2006 Businessman of the Year Award. He has been named in Who's Who and Who's Who in Business and is an ally of the Alliance Defense Fund, a friend of International, the Rule of Law Institute, the Individual Rights Foundation, the Human Action League, the Institute for Justice, the Federalist Society, the International Justice Society, the Christian Legal Society, the World Evangelical Alliance, and others promoting religious freedom, economic freedom, and civil society throughout the world. And I'd like to uh, welcome Mr. Pigeon, and thank you very much for being our guest speaker tonight. And um, go ahead. Well, thank you. Well, I want to begin my remarks tonight by saying that uh, there's not a lot of time left for Americans to act. I think we're reaching a point now where America has been asleep uh, throughout the duration of this Obama campaign. And I think also America has been in shock uh, because I don't believe that Americans were expecting what we have seen from the Obama administration. Uh, really in terms of the catastrophic overthrow of what we knew to be the United States of America. And I think everybody on this call would agree that when we look out at America now and we see this 25% unemployment rate, 
and a, uh, a deficit that's in the over $20 trillion, nonstop spending, no budgets, no rule of law, and intervention in, in over 19 countries around the world with no congressional supervision, that we've arrived at an America that we no longer recognize. And the question is, and this is the question before this group here tonight, and the question before all of us, do you intend to do something, or do you not intend to do something? And everything that you stand for and have stood for over all of these years is now at stake. And this this becomes extremely important. We are, are on the verge of Mr. Obama moving us from what is left, the tattered, shredded, constitutional republic into a complete dictatorship. Mm -hmm. I remind you, if you look historically at what the facts are, that Adolf Hitler was not German. He was Austrian. He was a usurper to the power in Germany. Napoleon Bonaparte was a Corsican of Italian origin, and he ascended to the throne over France. It is not uncommon for usurpers to obtain power and then to overthrow the existing pillars of the democracy or the particular republic in question. And this is what we have going on here. Now, there were arrangements made that most people are unaware of with our chief creditor. And our chief creditor is not and has never been China. Our chief creditor is Saudi Arabia. And we are a huge debtor to Saudi Arabia. And not only are they our chief creditor, but they also control the reins of authority in the back rooms in this country. And it is they who demanded and who received uh, permission to install a Muslim puppet at the head of the American government. It is they who did it. If you recall, and you go back and look at what happened at the World Trade Center, 13 of the 19 involved were Saudi intelligence. And yet, Mr. Bush did not see fit to attack Saudi Arabia, but instead attack Iraq. So what we have is, is we have been at war with a, a fundamentalist Islamic regime who, by the way, is 100% intolerant to any Christian churches appearing anywhere in its country or allowing Bibles to come into its country. They are completely 100% intolerant, and yet they put mosques in the United States and demand an equal status on every forum in this country. And they're man, the man who bowed to the Saudi king his first year in office, is sitting in the office of the presidency. If you recall, his crimes began immediately the day he walked into office. By February 9th, he had, he had transferred money to Hamas as a commission check for raising money on his campaign. Now, if America is going to wake up, now is the time, because there is no time left. You've got one of two choices. There's one of two scenarios ahead of us. One scenario is that Mr. Obama succeeds in erecting an establishment of martial law with himself as dictator. That's one scenario. <clears throat> the other scenario is, is that he rules over what's left after catastrophic collapse of the United States. That's the other scenario. So which would you prefer? So we have spent a great deal of time putting together articles of impeachment. And quite frankly, your congressman is not acting for two reasons, one of two reasons. One, they've been bribed. Two, they've been blackmailed. Or a combination thereof, which is to say you accepted a bribe, and if you come public against me, I'm going to tell them that you've accepted a bribe. Now, with those circumstances in mind, you have to remember that everything is at stake here. Everything is at stake. Your children's future, your grandchildren's future, whether or not you're going to ever own private property in your life, whether or not you're going to be a slave to a foreign power, or whether or not the cities are going to burn from foreign invasion. Everything is at stake. And so with that being said, we have proposed following the rule of law and a process that we believe to be the correct process. Now, some people have argued and said, well, you can't impeach a usurper. Well, you most assuredly can impeach a usurper because there's no one else holding the office of presidency. He is the guy that holds the office. He's the guy that walks into the Oval Office. He's the guy that signs legislation. He's the guy that signs executive orders. 
even if you say he does not lawfully hold the office, he holds by color of law, which makes its impeachment to be a legitimate and actually the only process, the only lawful process that is available for his removal. Now, the high crimes and misdemeanors are through the roof. I mean, there's been other presidents that have committed high crimes and misdemeanors to be sure, but nothing like this president. And we have detailed... We have detailed the high crimes and the misdemeanors in the Articles of Impeachment. Now, there's a federal statute out there that's very, very clear. If you know that a person has committed treason and you do not report his treason, you're guilty of misprision of treason. If you know that the president has usurped the office by means of a fraudulent birth certificate, which is the federal crime of mispersonation that has an ultimate penalty of up to 18 years in the federal prison, and you do not report that crime, you're guilty of misprision of the same crime. These are federal statutes. Now, if we don't live by federal statutes, then by what means does anyone in Congress hold power? If we do not live by the constitutional rubric that is set forth in our Constitution, its articles and amendments, then by what means do you sit in power in Congress? By what means? By the luck of the draw, or by the fact that you happen to get in there, you have a constitutional duty to uphold your office, because if you don't uphold the Constitution, you have no right to be where you are at all. And there is a question of legitimacy of the government. And because we have allowed a usurper to sit in the Oval Office for this long a period of time, and, we, and, and because no one will raise the issue because we were called names by a group of media magnets who have not paid taxes since the day Obama took office. You recall that GE, General Electric, owns most of the national media in this country. They have paid no taxes since Mr. Obama took office. Do you think there was a backroom agreement that was made? And we, everybody wants, and, and how many people have shut off national television? None. So you continue to listen to the propaganda, continue to listen to the lies, and you believe it when somebody calls you a birther. The reality is, is that Mr. Obama cannot prove that his mother was Ann Dunham, that his father was Barack Hussein Obama. He cannot, and he has not. And as a result, you don't know who he is. You don't know where he was born. You don't know his citizenship. You know nothing. And we have an entire federal established establishment that we have spent trillions of dollars on not one of whom will lift their finger to remove the usurper. Not one. Now the nation has been completely overthrown in a silent coup d'etat where a six-colored rainbow flag has been asserted over the White House and has been asserted over the United States Air Force Academy, even today. Who is this group that now claims sovereignty over the United States? And who elected them? And what are their policies? No one knows. What we do know is this. Mr. Obama has failed to establish himself as an American citizen. He's failed to provide any bona fides as to who he is. Instead, he has proffered three fraudulent, false, and forged certificates that include state seals, all of which are federal crimes, to claim that he was born in Hawaii after he personally claimed for 17 years he was born in Kenya. So the question is this, are we going to take the bull by the horns under the constitutional authority that is set forth clearly in the articles, saying that the president may be impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors? Do we do that or don't we? Mm -hmm. And if we're going to do that, who else has written articles of impeachment but us? We've laid it out. And we have the underlying federal laws to substantiate every claim. And there's a fact pattern behind every claim. Now, I can tell you, when the articles of impeachment were brought by the House against William Jefferson Clinton, rumored to be the illegitimate son of a Rockefeller, when those impeachments were brought against him, and they were paraded into the Senate, I demanded quietly within the, within the ranks of the Republican Party that we have a findings of facts and conclusions of law, because the Senate, of course, was saying, look, we're not going to impeach this guy. 
notwithstanding our duty under the Constitution, we're just not going to have the trial. Motion to dismiss, grant it. And I asked the Congress at that point to give us a findings of facts and conclusions of law. Don't impeach. Just find whether or not he committed high crimes and misdemeanors. Now, in this case, there is, as J.B. Williams said, there is no more impeachable president in the history of the United States. And all of these stupid arguments that your congressman gives you, well, you know, we want to wait to see what the election is going to turn out, because then we Republicans will hold power. And what have the Republicans given us since they took power? Obamacare. No budget. Approving of everything Mr. Obama did, while John Boehner covers him better than any Democrat ever could. Ever could. So you say, oh, if we just hold off, we can get the Republicans a majority. So what? So what? That excuse doesn't hold water. Well, if we impeach him, there'll be black riots all over the nation. Did you read what the head of the Black Panthers said in South Carolina? Now we go back and kill all the whiteies. Do you think it's going to take an impeachment of Barack Obama before the race riots begin? That's all fabricated nonsense. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, the whole world, who isn't getting its news from General Electric, knows exactly what the circumstances are. That's why Robert Mugabe in Zimbabwe has said, even Satan tempted Eve, not Adam, which puts Obama to the left of Satan himself. Vladimir Putin said, your values will never be our values. The rest of the world revolts from Mr. Obama's perspective, and they know that he doesn't lawfully hold the office. Now, where your Congress people are concerned, we have the same problem. I'm in one of the most liberal states in the country. And we have Congress people who are concentrating on raising taxes and making sure that inside corporations get deals. One of our congressmen, a congresswoman from my district, got elected touting Karl Marx and progressive collectivism. So I'm just you. When you're talking about to your representatives, your representatives need to know that there's no time left. They are the ones who will be forever enshrined in history as having lost the United States of America. Their names are the names that are going to be on the black stone in front of Arlington saying, these are the 435 that betrayed you. <laughs> and so these congressmen need to step up to the plate. They need to stand now. And I, I can tell you, there's a spiritual battle here, because you, as the citizen, are going to have to ask yourself the question. If your congressman has been bribed, and if your congressman has been blackmailed, and the Obama turns the war machine, the propaganda machine, on your congressman, to declare him to be this, or to declare her to be that, or whatever the scandal that it is that they brew with their propaganda machine. Do you hold fast to your congressman who's had the courage to stand up and say, let's impeach? Or do you turn on him and begin to throw stones like someone who has not committed the first sin? It is a spiritual issue that you must forgive your congressperson so that they can act in accord with the Constitution. And when you're in holding a position of power like Supreme Court Justice, or you're in the House of Representatives, or you're a senator, you need to ask yourself right now, because there's no time left. Are you going to stand for your pocketbook? Are you going to stand for your legacy? Or are you going to stand for the nation? Forget what people think about you. You have one reputation, and that's before the throne of heaven. And that's where Amen. you need to make your peace.
So here we are with the articles of impeachment. The only lawful path available to the citizens of the United States to regain the country. And if we are not going to shrug off the most illegal presidency in the history of the nation, and which coincidentally is one of the most immoral leaders in all of world history, the man of sin, the man of lawlessness, if we're not going to shrug that off, then there is no constitutional republic, there is no America, there is no society called American, there's only a memory. That's all I have to say. Bravo. Amen. Amen. That, that was uh, one of the things that I would like to say is remind everyone that's on the call that this call has been recorded. I highly recommend that you direct the members of your group to listen to this recording if they were not on the call tonight. And it's very simple to remember the number that you called in and the PIN number that you used. Um, the only difference is to, to actually hear the recording. Instead of dialing 209-647-1600, it's 209-647-1699. So if you, if you call in and you dial the 1699 and you use the same PIN, you will be able to hear the recording of this call, and your members who are not on the call tonight can listen. And I highly recommend that if after what Mr. Pigeon has just said has not motivated you to action, nothing is going to do that. So I believe this message needs to be heard. Um, if you don't remember the call-in number, you can just go to the tennis site, uh, cactn.weebly.com, and on the events page, all the numbers are listed there. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Pigeon. I'm sorry we didn't have you on the first call. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm kind of breathless right now. I just wanted to give everybody just a little brief update of what's going on in Tennessee. Um you know, I mean, we did kind of start this this uh, this thing, and, and our membership is growing. Um, I attended a meeting on Saturday with JB, and we delivered the message to that group. JB and I are going to be on two radio interviews tomorrow, um, and I'm going to tell you that I made my decision a couple days ago. Uh, my U.S. Congressman, uh, I am a county commissioner here where I live in Tennessee. Um, my U.S. representative, I have contacted him and I have been contacted in return about setting up a face-to-face -face meeting with him. And if when we have this face-to-face -face meeting, he tells me that he is not going to support the articles, I am going to right then announce to him that I will be personally running against him for U.S. Congress in 2016. I may only get two votes, but, you know, I have made that commitment to myself that, you know, it is my duty. I absolutely have to do it. I, I made a comment at the meeting on Saturday that we need more people that are running for office, not because they want to, because when somebody wants to run for office, coal is up for sale. We need more people. We need more people that run for office because they know it's their duty and they absolutely have to do it. Those people will not be bought. Your principles will not be bought because you're doing it all for the right reasons. So I'm telling you that if my representative refuses to support this effort, I will definitely be running against him in 2016. And I no more want to go rub elbows with those criminals in D.C. than I want to do anything that's horrible and distasteful. But I will do it. I didn't want to be a county commissioner either, but I did it for the exact same reasons that I'm going to run against this guy if he refuses to support us. So 
That's what I have to say. Um, Karen, if I may. We, oh, yes. Karen, if I may. First of all, I want to thank. I want to thank Steve. I know what his schedule oh. looks like. It looks worse than mine, and so I want to thank him for taking the time to be here with us tonight. I hope he'll stay long enough to field a few questions in your open Q&A because I think it's important for people to be able to ask someone like Steve uh, questions about the articles and their, all the different legal opinions floating around uh, as it relates to core or worn toe as an option uh, has been floated around out there for some time now. Uh, Article 5 convention has been floated around. All these different ideas, which in my opinion distract people from what the Constitution simply tells us to do, and that's just be mm -hmm. move and hold mm -hmm. people accountable for when they act against the people and the country in the fashion of this administration. And so uh, I hope you can stay with, around and do that. I want to thank you, Steve, personally for being here. Um, well, thank also, you, Joe. I also obviously share... Steve's passion and Karen's passion and Dave and Colonel Harding's passion. Um, we are all very passionate about this. And as Steve mentioned earlier, we drafted these and, and we took our time and we very carefully researched the this, this situation, uh, both from a practical and political standpoint, but also from a legal angle, as Steve mentioned earlier. And I'm sure can take questions on if he's able to stay. Um, but we also knew at the time that alone, what we were working on and what uh, we wanted to be done with those proposed articles would not be able to be done without a massive support and direct engagement by people in every state across this country. And that's what CACTN has brought to the table is their leadership in helping coordinate the state groups so that this message becomes a loud, deafening demand of these politicians that they do the right thing. They take a stand for the Constitution. They take a stand for what's right. They take a stand for freedom and liberty and national sovereignty and security. For the first time in many, many years in this country, these problems go back before Barack Hussein Obama, but Barack Hussein Obama is the icing on the cake. That's mm. why we are at the 11th hour here. That's why Steve is saying we're running at, fast running out of time, very fast running out of time. I heard earlier some of the callers say that a week or two or three out, they'll get a website together. And I understand that we're doing this with no budget and, in some cases, no technical ability. So we're relying on friends to help us get these things done. But time is of the essence here. Right. And we, and we need to be aware of that and we need to be that. There's no, there's no substitute for organization, professionalism, uh, mobilization, one voice, one message. There is no substitute for that right now. We simply have to grow our numbers. And, and in order to hold these politicians accountable, we have to hold each other accountable. We have to hold our friends and our contacts accountable. It's not, a, it's not just bad if a, if a rep says they, they won't support impeachment. It's bad if our friends and neighbors won't support it because that's why the politicians won't support it. So mm -hmm. we've got to get down to it, and we can no longer accept no for an answer. Not from our friends, not from our neighbors, not from our Facebook buddies, not from our Tea Party or 912 or Oath Keepers friends. We can't, we can't afford to accept no for an answer from anybody at this point. We simply have to make this happen. And every person on this call and every person who's going to get to listen to tonight's call uh, on recording, we need to make sure that this message goes viral because that's what we have to have in order to get where we're trying to go.